Clipsio Paint is full of surprises. In this video, I'm gonna go over 14 secret tricks that I've discovered while using Clipsio Paint that'll make you feel like a master. Hopefully by the end, you learn at least one new thing. And if you did, give it a like and consider subscribing. Let's jump into it. This tip is more of a bonus because it can kind of work in any program that has history. It's called traveling back in time with your art. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's make sure our history is activated. Let's go to file, preferences, Next, click on performance and adjust your undo levels. Somewhere between 50 to 100 is reasonable. Mine's at 200 because I just have the extra space on my hard drive and memory for it. Let's say that I have a character and I start making some adjustments to that character. So I paint something on the character and I realize, oh man, I'm on the wrong layer, but I like all these changes that I made. So how do I bring them back and get back my original line art? Well, I'm going to hit Control C and then undo back to the place that I was. And then on a new layer, Control V. And now I have all those changes and my original. And so I call this traveling back in time with your art. Clipping layers to group folders. I actually didn't know this was possible until recently. Let's say we have an object here that we want to paint on top of. It could be something complex like a character or something simple like a background. We're going to add this to a group by right clicking on it, hit create folder and insert layer. I have a hotkey set to control G to do that. Now, if I create a new layer and drag that layer outside the folder and then hit the clipping mask, clip to layer below, it should, wait a minute. What, ha what happened? It's not, it's not doing what it said it's going to do. Aha, here's the trick. Go to your folder settings, change it from through to normal, and now it works as intended. Next is the command bar. This is an underutilized little hotkey section. The command bar is a good in-between of not navigating through your menus all the time and also not taking up your entire keyboard with a bunch of convoluted hotkeys. So this up here is the command bar. And you'll see that I have some hotkeys here that you may not have. So I want to show you what I've added that I find very helpful. One of the first ones is the visibility of vector strokes on vector layers. So I have a toggle here to turn that off and on, and I can also turn off and on vector snapping. This was a feature that was introduced into 4.0 and I can turn it off very quickly. The next is that I have a rasterized layer button here. So I'm currently drawing on a vector layer. If I click this, it's going to turn it into a regular layer. I also have the convert brightness to opacity hotkey here, which is normally found under edit convert brightness to opacity. And what this does is it turns white and bright pixels into transparent pixels. This is great for isolating drawings off of sketches, or if you accidentally draw on a white background, you can just isolate it really quickly. I also have my change canvas size here so I can quickly edit and adjust things. Anything that I want to quickly access, I put here on the command bar. Instead of navigating through the layers and looking for it every time or assigning it to a hotkey, if I make a selection, I can quickly invert my selection and also deselect quickly. I can also reverse gradient, which means that I can change the color of things and invert them. Now, at a glance, this doesn't seem like it's very helpful, but when it comes to masks, this is very helpful. It lets Get rid of this part here. Oh man, I did the wrong selection. Well, now I can just hit reverse gradient and it chooses the correct selection for me by inverting it. So if you wanna customize your own command bar, go to file, command bar settings, and you have access to everything here in Clip Studio Paint that you can find in the layer menus. If you can achieve it in the layer menus, you can put it on the command bar. The great thing is, is once you're in this command bar settings menu, you can click on anything on the command bar to delete it or separate it into its own group. So add and separate and remove things as you see fit. I think this is totally worth pouring a little bit of time into and customizing your command bar with things that you find very helpful. Now, if you didn't know, you can convert raster layers into vector in Clipsio Paint. Super handy. Let's just say as an example that you have line art for a character, just an arbitrary character, of course, any character. It could be any character, but let's just say it's a character that looks like this, just for an example, just arbitrarily, random, no coincidence. And you think, aw shucks, I wish I had made it vector because then it would make the erasing a lot easier. You'd be right. All you have to do is right click, go down to convert layer and change it from raster to vector. And you think it can't be that easy. It can't be that easy, Clip Studio Paint. It is. And Clip Studio Paint does its best to convert it into a vector layer. So now all these points are editable. 
Ta-da, we have vector strokes. Pretty cool. You may have seen these from time to time. You'll be scrolling through a menu and all of a sudden you see something like this, file object, and it says X on it. Well, what does that do? Well, huh? when you press X, it opens it. Or P, and it starts selecting things. This is indicating that you can click on a menu and then use a hotkey to access that menu option quickly. So how is this useful? Well, for me in particular, it came down to cropping. I went to edit and I had to go down all the crop. And then I thought, is it as simple as just pressing edit and Z? Turns out it is. So that's what that's for. The next is searching for layers. If you have a large file, being able to sift through your layers quickly is super helpful. And so if you want to find something in particular, if you stayed up to date on naming all your layers, you can search for it. Simply go to window, search layer, and now we can use the search bar to search for layers. And the nice thing is, is this can stay open while you're working and basically allow you to see two of your layer panels at the same time. So if there is a reference that I want to see and I don't want to see anything else and I want quick access to this particular layer, I can have a separate panel for that. All right, the next thing I want to show you is file objects. File objects is Clip Studio Paint's equivalent to smart objects in Photoshop, but the setup requires a couple more steps than Photoshop. Let's just take, for example, this painting that I did and let's duplicate it, right click, duplicate, and let's right click on this and go to file object here, convert to file object. We're going to do the entire drawing area, hit OK. And let's just save this here. There we go. And now we have a file object. And what we can do with this is now we have some image properties here in our tool property panel that we can adjust. So for example, I can scale this thing and it non-destructively does this. So what I mean by that is if I were to right click on this, go to file object, open the file of the file object that we just made, go here, paint on it, hit save, go back. Now this is saved. So you can see it's non-destructively working. What we can also do is change the mode to free transform. And now we can place this in perspective. So I'm sure you're already getting ideas of how we can use this for really powerful workflows rotate the angle and we can tile it. All right, let me show you what we can do with this. Pattern images. So if I go to file, import, pattern from image, and I choose this floor texture here that I used for this picture, automatically what it does is it basically creates a reference of this photo and tiles it. Now that you've imported the photo, you cannot edit this. You would have to edit the photo and re-import it. So file objects are kind of a superior way to handle this, but I still wanted to show you how to quickly create patterns from images. Now in the original photo, I made this entire background in 3D, but I did use this floor texture for the floor of this cathedral. But what we could do, let's just say you wanted to keep this in 2D, now that we have a pattern from image, we can quickly create a pattern in space. And let's just say we wanted that to be our floor. And real quickly, let's just select the ground here. We're going to use the lasso selection, the multi lasso selection to just select the ground plane. Go back to our floor texture, create a layer mask based on that selection, deselect the mask here. So that way we can move this freely. And now we can drag this around and get more of a planar effect. If you wanted to take this a step further, recently Clipsio Paint, I think as a 4.0, allows snapping to rulers and perspective rulers. So what you could do is grab your perspective ruler or create one real quick. So you would create a perspective grid and then adjust the points where they need to go, vanishing points where they need to go, or these, uh, these reference lines rather. And then now if we go up to view, snap, snap to rulers and snap to objects, Turn that on. And now you could snap here to these points here. All right, the next tip is applying your specific brush shapes to vector paths. This is actually possible in Clip Studio Paint. I've actually done a short on this, but I'm going to show you again real quick. Let's just say there is the tip of a brush or a style of brush that I really want to apply to vector paths. First, create a vector path, get some vector points down. And now what we're going to want to do is pick your brush of choice. Let's do these scattered triangles, for instance. We're gonna click on this little wrench here for the subtool detail, go over to brush shape and click add to presets. Now you have this preset here of the brush. If I use the operation tool, select object, I can click on my vector path, go to brush shape, and now it's here at the top. 
and we can scale this as needed. Pretty cool. The next thing I wanna show you is the power of the Alt key. You can hold down Alt, click on an object's mask or ruler and copy it to other layers. Pretty handy. Now let's say that I have this shape here and I think this is not good enough. I need more control over this mask. What can I do to get more control over this mask? Well, you can simply mask the layer originally and then add it to a group folder by right clicking, create folder and insert layer, and then add a mask to that. So now I have control over two masks, one here and one there. And you can do this multiple times. I could add this to another group. So I have three masks on a single image. So if you ever want multiple masks, just add it to a group. I didn't know about this feature until recently, but Clipsio Paint has an equivalent of Photoshop's save selection or like channel paths. Let's say I wanna keep the character on the same layer, but I want access to this particular selection multiple times, and I don't wanna to have to keep making it over and over again. After you have your selection, go to select, convert to selection layer. And now you're gonna see Clipsio Paint has put a green mask over this. And now what we can do is if we ever need access to the selection again, we can just hold down control, and click this layer. And now we have access to the selection whenever we need it. And finally, auto actions. I have recently created Triple Jazz's Helpful Artist Actions, which you can download on Gumroad for free, and using auto actions speeds up my workflow. In fact, if you want more details on how you can use auto actions to speed up your workflow, check out my video where I go over the auto actions that I provide for you for free on my Gumroad. There's quite a list here. I think you're gonna find them all helpful. How you use them is simply go up to Window, auto action to show the window wherever it is. And then to import, simply go to the hamburger menu here, go to import set, locate the set that you've downloaded, import it. And now what I find really helpful is converting this to button mode. So that way you can just click on things and it just works. This is actually the third video that I've made going over tips and tricks for Clip Studio Paint. Feel free to check out the other two videos here and consider checking out my Gumroad or Patreon for supporting me. And as always, with these new tricks, I hope you can go and make good art.